After the emotional unboxing experience, I have spent three thrilling weeks using the Infinity Book Pro 16 Gen 8 as my daily driver to create this comprehensive review. With meticulous benchmarking and thorough inspection, this review delves into every detail, even the tiniest, to guide you in making the right decision and forming an informed judgment. Without further ado, let's jump right into the heart of the review. But before we jump, I should thank Tuxedo Computers for providing this device and confidently clarify that Tuxedo Computers has not sponsored or previewed this video, nor have they requested to do so. Always and forever, all ideas and opinions in this video are wholly mine, as my values are not for sale. The design and good quality go beyond mere aesthetics. They encompass durability and the tactile experience. Despite housing powerful hardware, the Infinity Book Pro 16 Gen 8 remains lightweight and slim. Weighing a mere 1.6 kg, 2.1 kg with power supply, and measuring only 17 mm in thickness, all while maintaining a sturdy build, thanks to its magnesium chassis. Its textured metallic matte finish provides a comfortable and premium feel while hardly attracting fingerprints. Additionally, the dark laser edged Tuxedo logo adds an elegant touch. It is worth noting that you have the option to opt for your very own custom logo, no logo at all instead of the Tuxedo logo. The 140 degrees hinge is well balanced. It is neither too loose nor too tight, allowing you to lift the display lid with just one hand, while securely maintaining its position at various angles once open. The only instances of plastic visible when using the Infinity Book Pro 16 are on the keyboard and the display frame. This Linux powered notebook is available in two color variants, icy gray, as featured in this video, and deep gray. Overall, the Infinity Book Pro 16 Gen 8 boasts a premium stylish design that, in my opinion, rivals even that of the MacBook. The Infinity Book Pro 16 Gen 8 features a full-size keyboard with a dedicated numpad, function keys, and the cartoonish stock super key. Just like the Tuxedo logo on the lid, you can opt for a custom super key. The keys are appropriately sized and spaced, contributing to an overall premium look. They offer satisfying tactile feedback, well-defined pressure points, and a decent travel distance. This combination ensures a precise and comfortable typing experience, minimizing the chances of accidental clicks. Regarding the boot quality, the keyboard feels sturdy with minimal flex, the layout is laser etched, and the black keycaps resist smudging even after extended use, which confirms the Infinity Book Pro 16's durability. The keyboard also features white backlighting with two brightness levels, enabling accurate typing even in dim environments. Last but not least, keyboard layouts for common languages except Arabic are available. Best of all, you can design your own and have it laser etched or opt for a completely blank one. Moving on to the touchpad. The Infinity Book Pro 16 Gen 8 boasts a geniusly sized and solidly built touchpad with a glass surface that ensures precise and smooth navigation and scrolling. It supports multi adjusters and includes integrated buttons. Even more impressive is the ability to deactivate the entire touchpad by double tapping the left upper corner or deactivate only the right half by double tapping the right upper corner. Simply put, it is an exceptional touchpad. After using the Infinity Book Pro 16 Gen 8 for three weeks, my initial impression of the display remains unchanged. It is visually pleasing. With a contrast ratio of 1200 to 1, this Omnia display produces clean and accurate images with vibrant colors. The 89 degrees viewing angles ensure comfortable positioning without compromising the clear visual experience. The 16 inch size and the 16 to 10 aspect ratio provide additional vertical screen space, enhancing productivity, readability, and multitasking capabilities. Furthermore, the 350 nits brightness guarantees excellent visibility in well-lit environments, ensuring a comfortable visual experience even when working outdoors. Additionally, the 240Hz refresh rate offers smoother motion and improved responsiveness. Thanks to the matte anti-glare coating, the display potentially reduces eye strain. So, is the Infinity Book Pro 16's display perfect? As I always say, the perfection is highly desirable but elusive. One drawback of this panel is its limited refresh rate options, 240Hz and 60Hz. The former is impressive but power intensive and the latter compromises the visual experience. I found this somewhat disappointing. As I had hoped for additional choices, such as 144Hz or at least 120Hz, 
to be available. Another potential concern, especially for photo editing and video production professionals, is the color gamut. While this screen covers nearly 100% of sRGB, it only achieves 75% coverage of Adobe RGB and 80% coverage of DC IP3. Efficient connectivity and versatile I.O. ports are essential for seamless data transfer and peripheral connection. The Infinity Book Pro 16 Gen 8 embraces dual band Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card, specifically the Intel AX201. It supports Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2. It also provides impressive transfer rates of up to 300 megabit per second on the 2.4 gigahertz band and up to 2.4 gigabit per second on the 5 gigahertz band. Beyond numbers, what really matters is how my wireless experience has been with this card in the Infinity Book Pro 16. And I'm thrilled to say it's been highly stable with no instances of connection loss or speed drops. Plus, unlike the AX200, I didn't need to fiddle with my router settings to ensure proper functionality. Regarding IO port, the left side includes the familiar Kensington Nano security slot as a classic anti-theft solution, a USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 port linked to the dedicated GPU, supporting G-Sync technology and featuring a DisplayPort 1.4a interface. It also delivers up to 15 watts of DC power output, although power delivery DCN is not supported. Additionally, there is an SD card reader and a 2-in-1 audio headphone jack. Moving to the right side, we find a Thunderbolt 4 port connected to the integrated GPU, Supporting DisplayPort 1.4a, port delivery DCN with a minimum of 65 watts and up to 15 watts of DC power output. There is also a USB A 3.2 Gen 1 port, a full-sized HDMI 2.0b port connected to the integrated GPU, supporting the HDCP 2.2 protocol and the power plug DCN. The selection of ports is well curated, yet the RJ45 port is notably absent. Fortunately, there is a USB-C Gigabit Ethernet adapter which I initially considered an extra in the unboxing video. However, it's worth noting that this adapter is not free and does come at an additional cost. In most cases, I don't anticipate exceptional performance from notebooks, webcam, speakers or microphones. The 8th generation of the Infinity Book Pro 16 comes with a full HD 2 megapixel webcam that produces good images and colors and the sufficient lighting. Ensuring you don't look grainy during online meetings or video calls. Additionally, it features a face detection IR sensor that allows you to unlock your device using your face for fast login. The bottom position speakers are not tiny and are surprisingly loud enough with decent bass and without distortion. They are quite satisfying for a notebook. Additionally, as I presume in the unboxing video, the Naimic audio technology is not supported on Linux. Therefore, we gain no benefit from it. Even if the Infinity Book Pro 16 is Naimic certified, why is it included in a Linux-oriented device? The microphones are also decent. They record clear sound, although they capture keyboard and touchpad clicks. so you probably wouldn't use them for audio production. Finally, I can confidently say I'm not disappointed with the Linux Notebook's webcam, speakers, and microphone performance. We've reached a section that's a favorite for many, performance and battery life. Let's kick things off by delving into the specifications. Beneath the surface, the Infinity Book Pro 16 Gen 8 houses the Intel Core i7-13700H processor with 14 cores and 20 threads. These 14 cores comprise 6 high performance cores, achieving a maximum turbo frequency of up to 5 GHz, and 8 efficient cores, reaching a maximum turbo frequency of up to 3.7 GHz. The processor also includes a 24MB L3 cache and the Intel Iris XE Graphics 96. Apart from the integrated Intel GPU, the new generation provides you with two dedicated GPU options, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4060 and the 15% faster NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070, both equipped with 8GB GDDR6 VRAM. These GPUs feature support for ray tracing and DLSS3 technologies. Additionally, they are compatible with DirectX 12 Ultimate, OpenGL 4.6 and Vulkan 1.3. Moreover, these GPUs handle high-resolution displays. 
they can go up to 8K resolution at 60 Hz using the USB-C port and up to 4K resolution at 50 Hz through the HDMI port. You can connect up to two external displays to the integrated GPU and up to three external displays to the dedicated NVIDIA GPU. Continuing with the specifications, the Affinity Book Pro 16 can accommodate up to 64 GB of DDR5 RAM at 4800 MHz and 8 TB of NVMe PCIe 4.0 SSD storage. Last but not least, this Powerhorse notebook is kept cool by a dual fan cooling system. Remarkably, it also incorporates a liquid metal thermal interface between the CPU die and the heatsink, enhancing heat transfer efficiency. Our review device features a 1TB Samsung SSD, 32GB of RAM, and the robust NVIDIA GeForce RTX 46. With this remarkable specification in hand, let's now proceed directly to the benchmarking phase. Incorporating almost all of your suggestions, I conducted extensive benchmarks on the Infinity Book Pro 16, evaluating its performance under both battery power and AC power using various tools. Subsequently, I compared the results to those obtained from other notebooks in the same category. Before we proceed, let's compare the CPU performance under battery power with its performance under AC power. Surprisingly, based on the Geekbench and Passmark results, there is a substantial difference in CPU performance whatever the notebook is plugged in or operating on battery power. However, the difference becomes quite noticeable when it comes to the GPU. Therefore, if you want to achieve the best performance from your notebook, especially during demanding tasks, you should consider connecting it to the charger. Moving on to the comparison with other devices, the Infinity Book Pro 16 stands out with its remarkable Geekbench 6 scores. 2532 for the single core performance and 10308 for the multi core performance. These scores put it in direct competition with other notable devices like the Dell XPS 15 and Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Ultra. Moreover, the i7 13700H CPU at the core of the notebook, paired with fast DDR5 RAM, achieves impressive number in the Passmark benchmark. 27000 539 for the CPU and 3722 for memory. On the GPU side, the integrated Intel Iris Xe Graphics 96 achieves better results than the NVIDIA 1050 in the Blender benchmark. In the Unigine Superposition benchmark, it achieved 3368 points at 1080p medium settings, maintaining a frame rate of 25. This performance highlights its suitability for lighter graphics tasks, yet it is not enough for graphic intensive tasks that require a dedicated GPU, like the NVIDIA RTX 4060, which is ready to showcase its capabilities. In the Blender benchmark, the NVIDIA RTX 4060 garners an impressive score of 3916 points, positioning it in the top 10%. Transitioning to the Unigine Superposition Benchmark, it records 5,336 points at 1080p extreme settings, maintaining an average frame rate of 40. When switched to 4K optimized settings, the score goes up to 6,223 points, with an average FPS of 47. In the Basemark Benchmark, the score reaches 9,209 points at 4K high settings, with an average FPS of 92, which positions this Linux notebook on par with the Asus VivoBook Pro 16. These results clearly showcase the impressive performance of the Infinity Book Pro 16 Gen 8, both in terms of its processor and dedicated graphics card. Additionally, I have tested it under different scenarios, including kernel compiling and with various programs such as Blender, Kden Live and Dark Tape, consistently experiencing smooth and reliable performance. Even when dealing with substantial projects, there have been no noticeable slowdowns or performance dips. All the information discussed earlier falls short of offering a complete assessment of the device's performance without factoring in its heat management. Under stress and heavy load, 
The processor temperature was around 85 degrees Celsius. And the NVIDIA graphics card temperature was at 80 degrees, with the fan speed reaching 80%, at a room temperatures of 30 degrees Celsius. On hotter days, when the temperature soared past 40 degrees Celsius, the fan speed escalated to 90% to maintain the processor temperature below 90 degrees and the graphics card's temperature below 85 degrees. It's important to mention that during intensive tasks, I have observed a noticeable temperature increase in the keyboard area. While the rise isn't excessively high, it might be a bit bothersome, especially in warmer conditions. All in all, despite the audible noise from the fans, under stress and heavy load, the cooling system demonstrated reliable efficiency in dissipating the heat without compromising performance. When discussing battery life, it's crucial to factor in the power consumption of the CPU and GPU in our case to provide a balanced evaluation of battery performance. The Intel Core i7-13700H operates with a standard TDP of 45 watts, which can ramp up to 70 watts under heavy workloads. Similarly, both NVIDIA GPUs have a total TGP of 70 watts, which can extend to 95 watts in specific scenarios. I regularly tested the performance of the 80 watt hours battery from Gatak that powers the Infinity Book Pro 16 Gen 8 under various circumstances multiple times for accurate results. This 80 watt hour battery delivers up to 5.5 hours of usage during my typical activities, which include web browsing, word processing, and watching YouTube videos. All at 240 Hz refresh rate with Wi Fi, Bluetooth, and keyboard backlight turned on. Lowering the brightness to 30% and deactivating Bluetooth adds an extra hour to the battery's usage time, extending to roughly 2 hours with the refresh rate reduced to 60 Hz. Additionally, when using the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4060, the battery achieved 3 hours of life under light to medium loads. With a 240 Hz refresh rate and Bluetooth, Wi Fi, and keyboard backlight enabled. On the flip side, the 180 watt charger included with the notebook can charge the battery from 10% to 90% in a mere 1 hour and 10 minutes and from 0% to 100% in an average of 2 hours and 15 minutes. With the last 10% taking about 1 hour due to a slower charging pace aimed at preserving battery health. For safety, ensure proper grounding of the charger to avoid mild electric shocks when touching the Infinity Box metal frame. It is worth noting that this occurrence isn't a manufacturing defect. It's common in quality notebooks with metal chassis. In conclusion, considering my experience with the Tuxedo Pulse 15 Gen 2, which comfortably delivered up to 12 hours of typical use, and factoring in the dissimilarity in power conception and battery capacity between the two models, I can fairly assess the battery performance of the Tuxedo Infinity Book Pro 16 Gen 8 as satisfactory. Before accessing the BIOS, I had a mental image of it. A classic BIOS with a grey background and bright blue highlights. However, this perception quickly vanished after I repeatedly pressed F2 while booting. The Tuxedo Infinity Book Pro 16 BIOS powered by Amy features a modern interface design that harmonizes with its refined exterior. It showcases a blue motif with artistic accents vibrant green highlights, and a representative icon for each tab. This elegant BIOS is stable and feature-rich, offering a wide array of configuration options, including essential security settings, where we can configure the number of efficient cores and performance cores, enable or disable passive cooling, Intel management engine, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, webcam, audio, and TPM. Configure the maximum memory frequency, Choose the operating mode, performance, or power saving. Unfortunately, one significant drawback of this BIOS lies in its closed source nature. Tuxedo Computer is working on providing an open source BIOS option such as Core Boot to its hardware, but we still do not have the opportunity. Additionally, it's noteworthy that there is currently no option to disable the dedicated graphics card from the BIOS. Moreover, the Infinity Book Pro 60 lacks hardware kill switches. Consequently, if you are not confident in the ability of Linux and the BIOS to ward off potential hackers from accessing your webcam, you will need to use tape to cover it. We've extensively covered nearly all the customization options in the preceding sections. 
However, to ensure you capture every valuable detail, it's essential to re-emphasize these customization choices. In addition to the two available color options, you can personalize the Infinity Book Pro 16 Gen 8 with your custom high-quality chassis logo, super key logo, and keyboard layout. Furthermore, I consider upgradability and reparability as crucial aspects of customization and fundamental modularity is imperative in any Linux hardware. Fortunately, Toxedo has thoughtfully addressed this need. You can easily open the bottom tray using a suitable screwdriver to reveal substantial upgrade possibilities. The notebook features two accessible RAM slots and two M.2 SSD slots ready for upgrades. Moreover, tasks like fan cleaning, battery replacement, and network card swapping are hassle-free, with well-documented guides accessible on the Tuxedo official website. Most importantly, you can perform all these tasks without voiding your warranty. It's not just about the hardware, it's about the Linux ecosystem. The Infinity Book Pro 16 comes pre-installed with the in-house Tuxedo OS, unless you opt for a different option during the configuration of your device. In a nutshell, Tuxedo OS is an Ubuntu-based distribution that features the KDE desktop environment. It's an optimized distro for Tuxedo hardware, equipped with all the necessary tools for an out-of-the-box experience. One of the standout tools is the Tuxedo Control Center, an excellent utility that gives you control over your hardware. It offers real-time insights into CPU and GPU usage, along with temperature, and provides a selection of predefined performance profiles. You also can create a custom profile by adjusting fan speed, CPU frequency, and the number of logical cores. This level of customization lets you, for instance, extend battery life by reducing the CPU performance. Furthermore, the tool includes a dedicated section specifically for configuring battery charging profiles, which helps maintain your device's battery health over time. Regarding services, when you purchase any hardware from Tuxedo, you will receive a complimentary 10 GB registration code for my Tuxedo Cloud Storage. You can redeem this code on the official website to create a new account or use it to extend your current storage subscription. Additionally, if you even need to factory reset your notebook, the process is simplified. Connect your notebook to a LAN network using the USB-C Ethernet adapter and plug in the provided WebPi USB drive. Boot into it to access various options. including but not limited to Tuxedo OS, Ubuntu, and OpenSUSE. But what about the customer service? I've had the opportunity to interact with Tuxedo Computer's customer service on three occasions as client through email. And each time, I experienced polite and responsive service. It's worth noting that they successfully resolved my issues during all three interactions. They also offer phone support from Monday to Friday, between 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. and 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Tuxedo Computers has simplified device configuration while providing a wealth of options. Except from the CPU and display, you can configure nearly every aspect of your device. You can configure the GPU and color of your device, SSD and RAM brand and capacity, keyboard layout, operating system, with or without encryption, chassis logo, and power supply type, all according to your preferences. Additionally, you can opt for an extended paid warranty of up to five years. However, I would not recommend the extended paid warranty, as I believe two years is sufficient, and it's prudent to recognize that opting for the extended paid warranty is essentially a gamble, and not a wise use of your funds. You can also send additional instructions or notes about your device to Tuxedo using the comment box at the bottom of the configuration section. The starting configuration of the Infinity Book Pro 16 Gen 8, which features the powerful i7-13708 CPU, the impressive Omnia display, 16GB of RAM, 500GB of Samsung SSD, and the two-year warranty, begins at €1278, excluding 90% VAT. The price can reach up to 2,780 euros for a configuration that features the NVIDIA RTX 4070, 64 gigabytes of RAM, an 8 terabyte crucial P3 Plus SSD, a USB to LAN adapter, 
and personalized chassis logo and keyboard layout. I compared the price with notebooks in similar categories, such as ThinkPad T16 and LG Gram 16. With a nearly identical base configuration, I found that the Infinity Book Pro 16 Gen 8 offers a more cost-effective option. To conclude, the Affinity Book Pro 16 Gen 8 is a powerful, customizable Linux-powered notebook dressed in an elegant premium suit, offering an out-of-the-box Linux experience at a competitive price. While it lacks hardware key switches and an open-source BIOS options, it bears an excellent keyboard, touchpad, and a visually stunning display. If you are in the market for a high-end Linux notebook, the Infinity Book Pro 16 Gen 8 is undoubtedly worth your investment. As we conclude this review, I am eager to hear your thoughts. Is there any specific aspect you feel I might have overlooked or that you would like me to cover?